All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Before we get started, just a couple of those normal reminders. We will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. You can type those in by clicking that Q&A section or the chat section in the lower portion of your control panel. We will be posting a recording of the webinar on our blog. The link for that will be shown at the end. And if you'd like a PDF copy of the slides today, there will be a link to download those on that same post as the recording. Uh, if your question does not get answered today, or if you think of any others, please email our support inbox, which will be shown at the end as well. All right, what's on the agenda for today? Ergonomics, um, it's a term that most of us have heard, right? But do we really know how to implement it properly throughout our daily lives? We'll talk quickly about why we need it, and then we'll go into best practices for different areas of our lives. All right, so let's jump right in. First off, what is ergonomics specifically? The literal definition is an applied science concerned with designing and arranging things people use so that the people and things interact most efficiently and safely. Now, almost always when we discuss ergonomics, we're talking about it in the workplace. It's kind of where it was created um, because employers need to make sure that their employees are working in an environment that's safe and doesn't cause long-term health issues, right? And like I noted in the last slide, um, we will absolutely talk about work. I'm also going to take a little bit of time to talk about proper form in other areas of our lives as well. So why do we need things to be ergonomically correct? It really comes down to long-term health. If you're in a position that creates stress in parts of your body, sure, you can do it, right? You can sit in weird positions, but if you do it over and over again, let's say 40 hours or more per week, if we're talking about a job, for example, that stress on your body for not being in a good position is gonna turn into symptoms. And then the symptoms are gonna turn into disorders. Musculoskeletal disorders are typically what happens when we are in that non-ergonomically correct position for long periods of time. These disorders affect muscles, joints, tendons, and nerves. Now, a lot of the time they occur gradually over time, like I just mentioned, right? But they can also occur immediately with something like lifting the incorrect way. So this is what we want to hopefully help prevent, doing movements or positioning our bodies in the proper way so that we don't have those issues. So on a personal level, um, what you can do, sorry, I went, my slide went a little too fast there. So on a personal level, doing everything with proper form is something that will help you prevent injury, right? If you're not injured, you can work, you can exercise, you can do everything you want to do basically in life, right? If your employer or a supervisor, for example, having your employees doing things with the proper form is obviously hugely beneficial to you too, as most of you know, right? You prevent injuries, your employees have less absenteeism leading to higher productivity, you have fewer workers' compensation claims, things like that, and you increase morale because people feel good. When, when, we, when we feel good physically, you have better mental health as well. So all that good stuff happens just by paying attention to these little details. And a lot of you may already have ergonomic resources through your workplace. So if you're not sure if you do or not, it's always worth a conversation with your HR to see if they have resources to help you get started, again, specifically at work. But there are, of course, a lot of things you can do yourself on your own time as well, right? So I want to get to that. So let's start with sitting. We sit a lot in general, and especially now more than ever before, right? So my first goal is to actually sit less. Uh, movement throughout the day can help so much with prevention of some of these issues, helps with preventing aches and pains, keeps that blood flowing, with help, which helps energy levels and all sorts of functions with your body. So if you find yourself sitting a lot at home or at work, set some reminders to get up and move as much as you're able. Getting up and moving for even one minute every 30 minutes is kind of the general recommendation. Um, I know that might vary depending on what you're doing, you know, if you're driving versus just sitting, it's going to vary, but do what you can to get up and move around as much as you can throughout the day, especially if you have a sedentary life overall. 
But when you are sitting, make sure you're in a good position. So here are some things to think about. Again, it's going to vary depending on what you're doing and things like that. These are just general recommendations. Try to make them fit with what you're doing. So first, we want to sit up straight, right? Good. That posture is huge when we're talking ergonomics. And I'm going to talk about it a lot today. Shoulders relaxed, but back, you know, back and relaxed. A lot of times we don't even realize how much tension we're carrying our shoulders. So you can do some shrugs and then relax those shoulders back down so you can kind of feel what it feels like to be relaxed. Now, if you have a chair back, your butt should touch the back of your chair. Um, so we, we want it to be all the way back so you can use the back of the chair. The goal is to maintain all the normal curves of your back as well. So if your chair has lumbar support for your low back, use that. You can also use a rolled up towel or there's products that you can purchase that attach to your chair as well. One trick to figure out what they consider the normal curves of your back that you can do, and you can do this right now if you want to, go to the end, sit at the end of your chair and slouch down completely. Pretend you've got that terrible posture, like your teenager, I like to think, for example. Then come up and sit up super tall, really overdo that curve of your back, overarch it. Now relax down just slightly, they, about 10 degrees if you can picture that. So this is a good sitting posture according to Cleveland Clinic. So you're not always slouched down. You're not super exaggerating that movement. You're kind of right in the middle. Relax down, but you still have that curve in that lower back. So that's where, that's where you want to be as far as your upper body posture. And then the next tip is to keep your weight distributed on both hips evenly. So one way to help with this is to keep those feet flat on the floor, right? No crossing those legs if you can help it because that just shifts things. And if you cross your legs, you can kind of see your back kind of already twists a little bit. So feet flat on the floor, knees are ideally at 90 degrees with them even or even slightly above your hips. Okay, let me pause for a second here. Now, with different body types, different body sizes, different chair types, different chair sizes, not all of these things may be 100% possible for you, right? If you're not able to get a new chair that fits you um, or make those adjustments to get fully in that correct position, just do the best that you can, get as close as possible to these recommendations. Um, foot rest is something that you might need. Short people like me need that. If you don't have a foot rest, Maybe it's a box to begin with. Again, small steps, get what you can to get close to ideal. And then when you're ready to stand up, this is something that I think a lot of people don't talk or don't think about. When you stand up, you can do it in a, in a more ergonomically correct way as well. So you, you scoot to the front of your chair, just like you did when we were practicing the, the curve of your back, move to the front of your chair and then get as far to the end as you can. So you can just stand up by straightening your legs not by bending over further at your waist. Think about that. Most of us do that, right? We bring that chest down to get some momentum to get out of that chair, right? But if you scooch out far enough, so you're just able to stand up, that's the best recommended way to do it, if you will. Now, if you don't have a back to your chair um, for whatever job you may have, um, you can still follow those same rules. Obviously, you won't have the back of your chair um, with that lumbar support. But what you can do is just tighten those abs a little bit to give that back that little support. And you're actually gonna get a little better, better workout. And some people you know, use stability balls in the office or at home, things like that for that specific purpose, right? To kind of make your muscles use a little bit more. So we still want the same principle as far as how we're curved, but if you don't have the back of that chair, you can still do that as well. Just, yeah, may just have to think about it maybe a little bit more. All right, let's talk specifically at a desk job with a computer or things in front of you for just a minute, um, as that's a very common type of workspace. So, um, sorry, I'm seeing a couple chats here as far as like not being able to adjust um, to have your knees be at the right angle. Like I said, it's it's not going to be perfect. If you have someone in your workplace 
that deals specifically with ergonomics. I know I know here we do, we have someone um, in our safety department that will come and they'll actually do an ergonomic assessment for you. And they might be able to come up with some ideas um, that can help you, okay? Like I said, it's not gonna be perfect because chairs are expensive and, and you know even at home too. So just do the best that you can. Um, with those with the people that aren't able to get what they want because I'm the same way it's not perfect at my workspace but I do do what you can and then in that case it's even more important for you to get up and move throughout the day okay so so keep that in mind too all right so um, if you're at a desk job with a computer a couple other things for you to think about so set up your chair again as close to you um, as close to ideal as you can um, and then make sure that everything is within an arm's reach when you're sitting there. So you're not doing a bunch of stretching and straining or twisting to like say answer your phone or grabbing your pen or your stapler, things like that. Um, and then when you're typing, ideal setup, you know, have those elbows at you know almost 90 degrees resting on the arms of your chair, shoulders relaxed, wrists straight, so we don't worry about carpal tunnel, that type of thing. Um, the most common recommendation for monitors is to have your eye level at the top third of the monitor, so you're not looking up too much and kind of cricking your neck there. Uh, if you have a roller chair, again, avoid twisting. Uh, and again, get up and move when you can, because it's not ideal in the first place to even be sitting, right? Our bodies are designed to move and things like that. So do what you can while you're sitting and then get up and move. All right, how about driving? Um, I know some of you may drive for a living or you have a long commute or you just like to go road tripping a lot. Um, this is tough because, again, same thing with our office chairs or our home chairs. There's a lot of factors with cars, right, that, that may not have the ability to adjust depending on our height, our body type. Again, do the best that you can. So if there is lumbar support in your car seat, uh, again, try to make sure that you're sitting back as far as possible or move the seat forward, um, just like that chair position we talked about to get that natural curve on the back. You can also do that towel trick or get a specific lumbar pillow for the car. Those are out there. So again, we wanna sit up nice and tall, shoulders back, relax down. You don't wanna tilt your seat back too much as that can cause your head and neck to strain because you're you know leaning forward a little bit right at that spot. I have an issue with this. So this is something I'm gonna work on too. Um, 100 to 110 degrees is what the recommendations say. So basically, I think of that, you know, 90 degrees is straight up, right? That the chair, you won't have any, any leniency with that. Um, so a little bit farther back than that, but not too far off. If your headrest is adjustable, that should be positioned between, ideally, between the tops of your ears and the top of your head. And it should barely brush the back of your head when you're seated. We don't want that to push our head forward or let it lean back or anything like that. Makes sense, right? We just want to keep it in that neutral position. And then again, move the seat. So obviously we need to press the pedals. Um, we want to try to make it so that you're not stretching to press the pedals um, and that you're obviously able to reach the steering wheel. And we don't want to stretch our arms straight when we're reaching the steering wheel. You should have a slight bend in those elbows. Again, shorter people or just people with shorter arms. Um, you know, we want to be careful because we don't want to be too close to the airbag either. Um, but you can adjust the steering column in most vehicles. So ideally look to have about a foot, um, 10 to 12 inches between you and the steering wheel if you can for that airbag. And then with the steering wheel, uh, we've heard that it's 10 to 2, right? You hear that. But Actually, this largely has been traded in for a nine and three position on the steering wheel with our hands to have the most leverage when we're driving. Now, if you're driving for long periods of time, the eight and four position can actually lessen some strain. So, but again, be careful with this. This is mainly if you're, you know, on a highway, um, you know, not, not curvy, that type of thing. And obviously always keep two hands on the wheel, but that can be a little bit more of a comfortable position if you're on the long haul. Also, don't have a death grip on the wheel like you did in driver's ed. Uh, that can cause fatigue and strain um, in those arms and shoulders. Uh, a light grip is just fine uh, for the most part, right? And then seat height, of course, again, you know, we, we want those knees to be level or slightly above the hips. 
depending on the car size, your size, I understand this may not be possible because we obviously need to see over the steering wheel as well. Uh, so just do the best you can there. Um, keep, yes, death grip and bad weather. Sorry, I just saw that. Obviously, there's different situations where you're going to have a death grip. But in general, we want to have a light grip. Um, you also want your thighs to be fully supported all along the way. And ideally, about a two finger gap between where your knee bends and the seat. So again, I understand different sizes of people, different sizes of, of seats in cars. That's the general recommendation. And then adjust your mirrors so you don't have to crane your neck and see. Those rear view cameras on newer vehicles obviously are hugely beneficial so you don't have to completely twist in your seat to look behind you. But side mirrors, um, those types of things, make sure they're adjusted appropriately for you. Um, and then if you're able, again, I'm going to say this again and again, take frequent pit stops if you're able to get out and stretch. If you can't stop too much, just be mindful of doing some stretches like neck stretches, for example, when you can. Um, you, know, you can slightly bring an ear down towards the shoulder, nice and easy, keeping the eyes on the road, of course, but just different things that you can do so you're not stuck in exactly the same position all the time if you're not able to stop for long periods. All right, on to a newer issue facing us these days, uh, tech neck, text neck, there's lots of different terms for it. whatever term you wanna use. This is a real problem today, right? And it's gonna continue to be a problem long-term for us if we're not mindful. Uh, so depending on how far you tilt your head down, this guy right here, um, you could be putting as much as the equivalent of a 60 pound weight on your neck when you're looking down at your phone. Again, depends on the degree, but this guy definitely has 60 pounds, but you're still putting extra strain on your neck um, when you're looking down at your phone, whether you're seated or standing, it really doesn't matter either. So a few things to think about when you're in this position. So first, again, back to posture. It's so easy to slouch down on the couch, look at our phone or iPads or computers, right? So first, try to have reminders or cues to sit up straight as much as you can. Uh, there are actual products out there that you can buy that help with posture. Some of them, you know, they, they give you, you put it between your shoulder blades and it kind of buzzes to help bring it up. There's, there's actual like things that you can strap on to keep that. So, you know, depending on how, how worried you are about it and how far you want to go. There's different things, but simple things, you know, reminders um, on your computer, like a sticky note if you use your computer to sit up straight. Um, reminder alarm on your phone that goes off during a time where you're normally, you know, scrolling through social media, whatever it may be. The more you remind yourself, the easier it will be to make it automatic to think about that posture. So keep that chin up. Keep that neck in line with your spine, with your shoulders back and relaxed down, just like we've been talking about with sitting and driving. Uh, there's some uh, recommendations out there imagining a rope or a string attached to the top of your head, kind of pulling you up that kind of aligns everything, right? So that's kind of what you want to think about. I, I hear this in yoga a lot too. You keep, keep that neck tall and long, pretend that you've got something on the top pulling that up. Um, that's kind of how you want to think about it, or how you can think about it if you want to. So next tip is holding your phone at eye level. Now, this is hard. It's really hard, actually, because I try it, and it, it it's almost uncomfortable right away. So it's not something that's going to feel normal. Um, our arms want to relax down, right? But one great tip that I found, and it's pretty funny, is holding your phone like a T-Rex. So think about how a T-Rex is posture. They've got these short little arms, right? So Keep your elbows nice and tight, not, not squeezing, but keep them close to your side. I almost kind of use my ribs to prop up my arms a little bit. Um, so your phone is put up a little bit and is as close to even with your eyes as possible. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be better than this guy um, on the screen right now. And then again, similar to other tips, take breaks, do stretches, neck rolls, shoulder rolls shoulder blade squeezes where you simply try to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Do that right now. It feels so good. Chest stretches. Um, you can use a door frame for chest stretches. You know, just put one hand on either side, 
slowly lean forward until you feel that nice stretch across your chest and your shoulders. Um, for those two specifically with the shoulder blade squeezes and the chest stretches, hold them for five seconds, relax, and then do it again up to 20 times um, if you're able. You can do it more if you want to, but that's kind of what would give you a nice almost exercise session too, but it'll get you that nice stretch because I've mentioned this in other webinars, our, our muscles can actually start to shorten up on us if we have that bad posture. So these stretches can really help. And then as you know, I'm not gonna lecture you, but um, simply spending less time on our devices is always something to work on, right? So just take as many breaks as you can, put everything down, get up and get moving. Your body and your mind will thank you on that. All right, I will be getting with sleeping. I see that, that um, note coming through. I'll be getting to sleeping here in a few slides. All right, how about standing? Um, a lot of you might have jobs where you might be standing or again, we stand in line a lot. Um, honestly, it's not too much different than when we're sitting. So upper body, we stand up tall, chin up, shoulders back and relax. Um, it's typically easier to be in, in proper posture when you're standing versus sitting, right? If you're not, you're going to fall over. Um, so it should feel more natural in general. Um, and you can use that string trick too, right? To think about that natural curve, but our, our head is nice and tall, our chin is up, all that good stuff. Um, keeping your abs slightly in is and tightened a little bit is something that helps prevent overarching that lower back, which can cause a lot of us pain when we're standing. Um, you don't have to clench those abs as tight as you can, although it's a good workout, um, but keep a little tension there to, again, prevent that lower back from just arching too much when you stand. So just think about that. You can feel that um, when, you, when you tighten in your abs, how that arch lessens just a little bit. We don't want it completely straight, but we just we don't want too big of an arch either. And then keep your feet shoulder width apart, help with stability. Don't lock your knees completely out. You can have straight legs, but don't lock those knees. Um, this helps keep your back aligned. And as we've seen on viral videos can help you not faint in the middle of a wedding. Um, we've all seen those. You don't wanna be that next person going viral, right? Um, and then as far as weight distribution, you wanna be mostly on the balls of your feet. So like the pads right behind your toes, right? You don't wanna be on your tiptoes, of course, um, but you also don't want all your weight on your heels because again, this can throw off alignment and also balance. And then we just let our arms hang naturally at your side, keeping those muscles nice and relaxed, just like those shoulders should be. Now, if you're standing for long periods of time, um, be sure to shift your weight around periodically. Just rolling back and forth from your toes to your heels, keep that blood flowing. Um, and then of course, be sure you have supportive and cushioned shoes possibly a cushion mat to stand on if you work in a place where you stand in the same spot all the time. Um, and if you're standing, it's sometimes easier to get a quick stretch in as well. So don't forget about that um, with those arms and legs and stuff like that. All right, exercise. We all wanna get that in too. So I just wanna touch really quickly on proper walking and running techniques. So again, preventing injury is kind of the key with this, right? So same type of thing with standing. Keep that head and chin up, just like we just talked about. Um, when you're walking, you want to focus on an area about 10 to 20 feet ahead of you while you walk. So that's going to that's going to prevent that chin from dipping down. Needless to say, don't be on your phone when you're walking because that not only causes bad posture, but you can walk right into traffic, and that's a whole other set of issues. <laughs> so keep those shoulders down and back. Um, keep that chin up. Um, let's see what else. Keep that core engaged, like we talked about with the standing as well. Helps This helps balance and again, can help relieve that stress on that back. Your arms are gonna swing naturally, right? Um, so you're, you don't want them to swing across your body, which causes twisting. And you don't wanna swing them super high either because that can just, just fall out of line. So just nice, easy, easy walk with those, with those arms or easy swing, excuse me. Um, and then for walking, for your feet, it's ideal to do with like a heel to toe action, nice and smooth. We don't want our stride too big, nice natural steps, just rolling from that heel up to the toe, pushing off. And then try not to roll your hips too much up and down either. Ideally, you keep them fairly level so that we don't tweak that back. Again, we just, if our hips go up and down too much, it can just tweak that alignment. Now you hipsters know who you are 
right? You can strut sometimes for sure, but most of the time, work on keeping it even if we can, as close as you can. Again, with or with our body alignment and legs and things, everyone's going to be a little different, but just be mindful of it. And then so for running, and I'm talking jogging, not sprinting, um, almost the same techniques. The only difference is that when you are striking your foot on the ground, we want what's called a midfoot strike. We don't want to hit with that heel as it can, first of all, slow us down. And then second of all, you can stress the bone on your heel, you can stress your knees and on your legs. So since your momentum is moving forward, it's a lot easier just to hit that midfoot again, more of the pad on your feet and then take off again. You just keep that motion going and you kind of spring yourself forward. So just that's the difference between walking and running with your foot strike. And then if you're on the treadmill, just a side note, avoid holding on to the rails unless you have balance concerns. Obviously, if you do, be careful. But um, reaching forward or the rails can kind of throw your alignment out of whack. All right, lifting. Um, so this could be exercise lifting. This can be at home, work-related. I'm going to focus on the general recommendations for day-to-day. -day. So think laundry baskets shoveling snow, boxes in your garage, things like that. So first, don't lift too much, right? When in doubt, ask for help. Um, so there are a couple lifting options uh, for something on the floor. There's a knee option and a squat. Uh, so ideally, we warm up the muscles. I mean, let me back up. Ideally, we warm up our muscles first um, before we're doing any lifting, especially if it's heavier. Um, but I'm gonna stick with the squatting because that's probably the most common form. So basically the tips with that is get as close to the object as possible. And you wanna keep it, obviously depending how big it is, ideally it's not gonna be big enough where you can keep it between your knees as you squat. And then as you're lifting, keep those core muscles tight to keep that curve of your back. Don't hold your breath. That can cause issues like passing out, such like that, such things like that. Um, lift with your legs. This is what we hear all the time. I right? lift with your legs, not with your back. But basically that just means get in the proper position, get down far enough so you don't have to lean over, right? So get down, lift straight up with your legs and then avoid twisting. So again, it's gonna vary a bit, but these are just simple ways to kind of keep, keep in mind. All right, on to the sleeping, like I promised. So a couple things to consider from the sleep foundation. So Generally, sleeping on your side or your back are both considered better options than your stomach as far as keeping your spine in line, okay? Um, sleeping on your side with a pillow between your knees, with your knees slightly bent, not very bent, slightly bent is especially beneficial for those that may have back pain already. So something to think about if you, if you do have back pain. Um, and then make sure that pillow supports your head enough that it's in line with your spine. Typically you can kind of tell, right? Um, whether your, your neck is in line or not. Um, and then if you sleep on, if you do sleep on your stomach, um, things you can do, like have a pillow between um, your hips, right under your hips, okay? So that kind of pushes it up so our low back doesn't sink down into the bed. And then for a pillow for your head, really thin pillow or actually no pillow at all. So this prevents pushing that head and neck up out of line, right? Um, if you're sleeping on your back, I missed this one, um, put a pillow under your knees um, and then something under your low back for that lumbar support. Um, and then a pillow, obviously, that's not going to push your head up um, and your chin down. So it's really about, it's kind of a trial and error thing, right? Because you're not going to know what pillow is perfect, but Big thing with that is make sure that you're that you are replacing pillows um, specifically when they're no longer providing the correct support. All right. Yeah, and with with the knee pillows, if you're if you're tossing and turning, if you're not a very sound sleeper, it can be hard. There are um, things that you can actually wrap around your legs. There's products out there for that. Um, so you know, keep that in mind. You know, do some research if if it's something that you really want to do. I find that, you know, even if I'm twisting and turning, I can usually find my pillow to put it back in between my legs. Um, but again, do what you can. 
All right. And yes, thank you for the appreciation with the dog picture. I thought that was appropriate. He does not have proper form, obviously, as you can tell with his neck. He's going to be very sore when he wakes up in the morning. <laughs> so, all right. Um, basically, yes. And if you sleep on your back with your knees up, that's ideal. Have a pillow under your knees. Sorry, I just saw that. So let me finish up here before I jump back because it is uh, 1230 Central Time. So basically, however you sleep, just please don't feel like you have to change. Just look for the small adjustments to make to help prevent those aches and pains, all right? And then I'm not gonna jump into this, but just keep in mind that there's lots of exercises to help posture, to help keep you in a better ergonomic position. So stretches, we've, I've talked about this a few times. Um, don't forget wrists and forearms uh, when you're talking about arms. So, you know, simply pulling those fingers back towards your the upper arm there can stretch those forearms. Um, yoga and Pilates are fantastic options to help strengthen the core, which helps with, with posture. Cardio itself strengthens those core muscles. And then of course, strength training, right? Those actually build the muscles, but don't forget about the back when you're strength training. There are specific exercises, um, Superman's for example, um, that doesn't require equipment. You just lay on the floor, lift up um, those shoulders and the chest off of the floor, um, and you'll, you'll work those back muscles. So a lot of people focus on the core, the front, well, technically your back is part of your core, but they focus on the abs and they don't focus on the back, which is super important um, for that posture. All right, doing things ergonomically really, really helps prevent issues, okay? Um, but one thing, just like everything you do when you're trying to make changes, small changes, make a big difference. So think about some of those things we talked about today. See if you can incorporate one or two um, and go from there, all right? And I know you guys are giving lots of tips in the chat here, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I want. All right, before we get to some questions, just a reminder for the upcoming webinars, May already next month, um, Food to Fuel Your Mind. Uh, great, great one. I'm excited for that one. And then in June, we're gonna talk specifically about improving that Health Check 360 score. If you have a scored model with us, um, and it's not only gonna to apply to that score, right? I'm gonna just talk about general tips to improve your health, and then a good side effect will hopefully be improving that Health Check 360 score as well, all right? And then if you do have lifestyle rewards, um, if, if you do, it will note that if you, if you go to submit, but these are the questions that you can submit if, you're, if you need to do that. Um, these will be available. Again, download the slides if you need these, because I'm going to go to our contact information here for people who need it. Um, but yeah, those, those will be on the slides if you need them. And then, of course, our contact information. We are on social media. Um, past webinars and register for upcoming is on our blog. Give us a call. Shoot us an email. Again, if you think of more questions, um, please, please, please reach out. We would love to chat about this or any other topic you'd want to.